Forget gurus. Forget anyone claiming to be an online business expert without going through the challenges of entrepreneurship themselves. The Real Money, Real Business podcast is here to prove the best insights in online business comes from your fellow online business builders. We dig into stories of entrepreneurs selling their business on the Empire Flippers marketplace so that you can learn how they made their business profitable, how they overcame obstacles, and what lessons they learned in their online journey. If you want to take your business and your knowledge to the next level, you've come to the right podcast. Let's get started. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Real Money, Real Business podcast. I'm Michelle, and today we have Robert on the show who's selling an audiobooks, books, and Amazon KDP business on the Empire Papers Marketplace. Hey, Robert. Welcome to the show. Hey, Michelle. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Good, good. Happy to be here. Well, thanks for making the time to come on today. Before we dive into all the details, let's go over a brief summary of your business. It's an audiobooks, books, and Amazon KDP business in the books and education niches created in July 2014. The average revenue for the business is $12,708 per month, and it makes an average of $12,127 per month in net profit. Included in this sale is an Amazon KDP account with 111 ebooks and audiobooks and seven paperbacks, an audiobook creation exchange account with 111 audiobooks, an Ingram Spark account with 36 paperbacks, employee contracts, contact details for freelancers and agencies, and a copyright for one product. For everyone listening, you can visit empireflippers.com forward slash marketplace and search for listing 57876 to learn more about this business. Or you can unlock this listing to start your due diligence if you're interested in purchasing this asset. Robert, now let's hear from you. You've had this successful business for a little more than seven years now, and it's really impressive what you've managed to build in that time. So what can you tell us about your background in building and running online businesses? That's a good question. So yeah, I started this in 2014, but it was definitely a side hustle and I didn't really know what I was doing. So it didn't start to grow. I didn't take it seriously until 2018. But my first book, you know, I got live on Amazon and Audible in July 2014. And what happened is I found a mentor in about 2016 for Amazon for FBA. So I started doing, you know, private label business model. And that business really took off. So I had a private label brands. And then once I understood how Amazon worked, I said, you know what, let me revisit this book business and take it more seriously and take some of the things I learned, you know, from um, e-commerce and apply them, see if they could work in publishing, you know, on Audible and, and Kindle and all that. And then it was working really well. So from about 2018 on, I kind of took it more seriously and it started to do, you know, a lot better. So those first few years were a little slow, but ever since then, it's been really awesome. So how did you come up with the idea to start the KDP business? You know, honestly, my very first audio book I ever published was just something that I was looking for myself. You know, I was looking everywhere to buy a certain type of book and I could not find it anywhere on audio. Like it was in the stores, it was, you know, paperback, but it was not one single one an audio. And, you know, being kind of somebody that was like wanting to be an entrepreneur back in 2014, you know, I decided to make it myself and you know go where the customers are for audio, which is obviously Audible and Amazon. And so your business primarily makes money. It's not through the KDP model, is it through your ACX account or how does it primarily make money? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, it's primarily through ACX, which is, you know, the platform that Amazon owns that gets you live on Audible. So ACX Audible is where 90 or 95% of the profits come from. I do make some money on KDP and I do make money on Ingram Spark, but yeah, primarily it's ACX slash Audible. And so what was it exactly that drew you to the audiobook market? Do you prefer to listen to audiobooks rather than reading them? Because you were saying that you were looking for something for yourself that couldn't be found. Yeah, that's a good question. So I do enjoy listening to audiobooks. Yeah, for sure. You know, because it's multitasking, you know, listening to commute, gym, all that kind of stuff. So same reason everybody else loves it. Besides that, though, I also just love, you know, I think we're all familiar with the power of Amazon and how it's made a lot of people wealthy and millionaires. But there's still a lot of opportunity to sell physical products, but it's just gotten a little bit harder. And it's just a little more saturated in my opinion on amazon.com. But if you go on audible, it's kind of like a, it's a little bit more blue ocean. And just that, you know, the audible algorithm is fairly simplistic in this day and age and just easier to make money. You know, I want it to be, uh, I don't know, 
a big fish in a small pond rather than in the ocean, you know? So I went over to Audible, Amanda. <laughs> no, that's completely understandable. No, I know it's, it can be a bit complicated sometimes, even, you know, from a personal perspective when I'm trying to sort through things like for the Kindle to find appropriate products, it can be a bit challenging. Sometimes it just seems like there's an overwhelming amount of products out there. Exactly. Yeah. If you search, you know, like what's popular, something like cryptocurrency on amazon.com, you know, there'll be so many results that like, it won't even say it'll say over 5,000 or over 10,000. You go on Audible and you type in something like Bitcoin and it'll be like, oh, 200, you know, so just a lot less. And then also, of course, all that, like, because I, like I said, I did FBA and I, I did well with that, but it was like, you know, inventory, lead times, you know, Chinese New Year, all that kind of thing. Running out of stock. You don't run out of stock on an audiobook. <laughs> no, that's true. <laughs> that's a good point. So now that you had told me earlier that you have moved on from your FBA business and you've built this one up now and now it's quite profitable. So why have you decided to sell it now? Yeah, so I am um, moving to Los Angeles for personal reasons and I kind of getting a dream job. So I'm kind of leaving entrepreneur space by choice to get a nine to five, like a passion one. And I want to buy a house down there. So I need the funds for that. And I have other cash flow things going on. So that's pretty much it. And earlier you had said, you know, that you had started this and then kind of just left it. And then you had learned a lot from your FBA business that you applied to this one. So could you tell us a bit about what you've learned from running these businesses that I think you're not planning to get back into the online space anytime soon, but if you were in the future, what are some things that you've taken away that you've learned? Yeah, that's a good question for me to think about. But some things that come to mind is one thing I've definitely learned about Audible versus Amazon is kind of go like try to find an unsaturated platform. So like, for instance, if I was going to be or and be an early adopter, so I guess like if I was going to be a social media influencer, I'd try to go on a TikTok versus like YouTube, you know, because it's just like more opportunity, you know, as these platforms mature, they just get harder. Uh, if I was going to do e-commerce, I'd probably start an Etsy store versus an Amazon store. And then too, just understanding how these platforms work and understanding their unique nuances and algorithms. Because like I said, I didn't understand at all what I was doing when I first launched my first book in 2014. Like I didn't understand, for instance, that if a book is three hours or longer, they price it at fourteen ninety five. And if your book is over three hours, they automatically price it at fourteen ninety five for you. And an Audible membership costs fourteen ninety five a month for one credit. So if your book is fourteen ninety five a month or fourteen ninety five, people are more likely to use their one credit for your books. In the beginning, I was making all these short one hour books, and just nobody was buying them because it wasn't worth the value of their credit, basically. So just kind of really understanding how these websites work and stuff. So was there something that you did while you were building this site that worked particularly well? Maybe something that surprised you by how well it worked? Yeah, that's a good question. So basically, like I said, my first book that I put on Audible was something that didn't exist at all. And so I kind of invented the niche on Audible, as it were. Like it existed in the other parts of the world, but not on Audible. So I kind of brought it there. So I kind of took that philosophy to Audible and brought things that were not there onto Audible. And then like, it's funny, you know, after I did that, you could start to see those search terms, those keywords start to auto populate on Audible, like it created a demand. So I kind of took that approach, kind of like reverse engineering what wasn't there, instead of just seeing like, a bunch of best-selling books and just copying them kind of being, I don't know if that makes sense, but no, it does. That's actually really cool. It's an interesting strategy. And I think it kind of takes a leap of faith a bit to say, well, this isn't on there. Hopefully people are looking for it. It seems to have worked well for you. Yeah, that's true. It, it was a leap of faith at the beginning. It's not anymore, but it was back then. And so you had mentioned, is there anything else that didn't work for you other than kind of starting with the smaller format books? that you were talking about earlier? Yes, that was a big one. Having books that were too short, having niches that don't like lend themselves well to audio. Like I had some books, you know, when I was in the beginning, kind of like about computer programming or like, I think I had a couple of cookbooks. They just don't sell well. They're just not audio books. Yeah, I, I imagine there would be certain niches that would be hard, very visual ones, maybe like DIY, for example, that would be hard to explain to someone. If they're not actually looking at it. Yeah, exactly. There was times when I was trying to rip off good selling, not rip off, but like, you know, take a good selling book that did well in Kindle and apply it to audio. But you kind of have to think about audio on its own. 
That's an excellent point. So right now, where does the majority of your traffic come from? It's all within Amazon.com and Audible.com. Yeah, all internal traffic. So what are you currently doing in terms of marketing? I run some Amazon ads to paperbacks and ebooks, but it's pretty limited. I don't do a lot of it. And that's it. I don't do anything else. So if you were to keep the business, what are some ways that you would try to grow it? That's a good question. I have a couple brands that have a lot more books in the pipeline. And honestly, you know, I would be happy to keep this because I could do it after my new nine to five. So I just expand on those. Some of them are extremely cheap to produce. They're not costly and they have high earning potential. And also, I think, you know, when in your summary, you mentioned, you know, I've left a lot on the table. I've really neglected the paperback avenue. Honestly, not even a quarter of my books are actually even in paperback format. So I would do that. I would translate my books. I don't have that many books translated into Spanish. I would upload them all on Ingram Spark. I leave about a third. I don't have any hardcovers on KDP, which they just made that feature, you know, recently. I'd also do the A plus content. That's a pretty new feature for KDP. So I would get that going. And what is the A plus content? They've had it, you know, for Seller Central people for a while, but it's in the product description down below. Instead of just having text, you can have like not the main images, but down below, halfway through the Amazon listing page, you can have more image and more marketing opportunities, you know, down below. Okay. Right now, could you describe the amount and type of work you're doing on this business for maintenance? Yeah, it's basically looking for new opportunities. It's a lot of managing. You know, it's kind of like being an online general contractor. You know, I manage the narrator, that kind of thing, check in. You have to listen to their 15 minute sample, that kind of thing. I'm looking for new opportunities and I spent some time gathering reviews and that kind of thing and tweaking my Amazon ads. And what sort of skills or requirements do you think there are for someone who's not familiar with your niche or the business model? If you have no online skills, it would definitely be possible to run this business, but it would definitely be helpful if you understood, you know, just like keyword search, SEO, optimizing a title, that kind of thing. You know, running paid ads is super helpful. That would be a good skill to learn Amazon ads. Amazon ads and a basic understanding of SEO would be kind of the main things for sure. So I'm just curious, what is the process like for choosing a narrator for an audiobook? The main way is you put it on that on the website ACX and you submit it for auditions and their pool of narrators will submit auditions. And usually there's a plethora, like you can get dozens and you just kind of listen through their audition and then you just choose one you like. Is there anything that stands out to you in particular when you're listening to their auditions? Yeah, that's a good question. When you read something, like you can put meaning into it by the way you read it. You know, like here, I got the Spotify thing, the world's greatest heist comes to an end. Or you could read it like the world's greatest heist comes to an end. I don't know. I'm not a very good narrator, yeah. but. <laughs> no, no, I understand. You're looking for people who are sort of drawing emotion. Yes, putting meaning into it just by the way they say it. I just kind of know it when I hear it, but they're putting meaning into it by the way they read it. Okay. So it's a bit instinctive too, what you're looking for. Yeah, for sure. For sure that too, yeah. And I'm sure that somebody who was taking on the business, if they weren't familiar with this sort of business model, that it probably wouldn't take much time for them to develop that instinct. No, it wouldn't. And so what do you think are the biggest risks with this business that a buyer should be aware of? I would say the biggest risk is just the risk that are kind of inherent to dealing with any kind of Amazon business, like an FBA or private label business. You know, Amazon, you know, they do things arbitrarily. Sometimes, you know, they change their terms of service. So you got to stay on top of that. You know, it's their playground. It's their customers at the end of the day. So just like any FBA business or Kindle business, they control it and they don't always act rationally. So kind of them is really... The only real risk, because it's not really risky. It, these, you know, it's not like you know, I'd order a fifty thousand dollars worth of office furniture in a container or something. You know, this isn't like I'm not dealing with a lot of cash in this business or anything. So it's a lot less risky in that sense. But just the Amazon stuff in general. Yeah, that's I think the simultaneously the best and worst thing about the rise in technology is that it's great that we can streamline so many of these processes. But I know a lot of these big companies use AI to just randomly you know, disable accounts. And it's based on some 
algorithm that they have built into these AIs. And then it's difficult sometimes to get an actual person where you can explain your circumstances and say, hey, I have no idea why this was taken down. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, that's it. And so would you be willing to commit to a non-compete? Yeah, that's fine. And how much support are you offering buyers? I'm open to talk. I mean, definitely the 30 days, you know, standard email and Skype. I'm willing to go beyond that if somebody needs, you know, and even if we agree to the 30 days, it's not like if you send me an email at day 90, I'm going to not respond. (laughs) You know, I want the person to succeed, you know, and have it treat them well as it has treated me well. And are you open to negotiating something like an earnout? Yeah, I'm open to it. I mean, I prefer not to, but I'm not against it. So um, I'd definitely be open to hear it for sure. All right. Excellent. So putting yourself in the shoes of a buyer, why do you think this is a business worth buying? Gosh, a couple of things come to mind. I mean, if you look at, you know, the earnings graph since January 2020, it's been extremely stable. So that's the main one, just very stable business. And, you know, I mean, obviously on this online space, passive income took us around like a lot, but there was one month that, for instance, I didn't log into this ACX or KDP account one time, you know, not even once, and it produced the same amount of income. You know, I'm extremely confident. I would not recommend this, but you could not log into this account for a year and it would make you, you know, over $100,000. And I think too, that there is something to be said about what you touched upon earlier with not having to invest the same amount of capital as you would with an FBA business or an inventory based business. A hundred percent. Yeah. I had a product that it would cost me like $25,000 to order every time. And it made me like, a thousand dollars profit a month. So like it was cool, it was profitable, money is money, but it was like took way too much money to make that much money. And this isn't like that. Well, is there anything else that you'd like to share about your business that I might have missed? No, I think you did a good job. I think whoever takes us over is gonna really enjoy it. And the niches that I'm in are really powerful and audible in general is just really untapped. I don't think I can emphasize that enough. So there's a lot of runway left in this space. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for your time today, Robert. I've really enjoyed learning more about you and your business. Yeah, thank you so much, Michelle. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening. To learn more and see if this listing has already been sold, head over to empireflippers.com forward slash marketplace and search for listing 57876. If you're watching this on YouTube, click the link in the description to go straight to the listing. Once you've unlocked this listing, you'll be given everything you need to know about this business. So until next time, enjoy your digital journey.